You're listening to the Smaller Supercharged podcast with Rhea Freeman, episode 154. On today's Smaller Supercharged podcast, we're joined by the lovely Beth Sen, who I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure everyone knows you anyway, Beth. But Beth, thank you for joining us today. Tell us a bit about you and your lovely accounts. Oh, so I am Beth. I'm 29 years old. I've had my accounts for, oh, I think I've had it for like eight or nine years. So quite a while. Um, I do photography on the side, but obviously I can't take my own photos. So for my content, my mum takes my photos most of the time. Um, I've got two Connemaras that are in full work and I've got like three older horses that are retired. Uh, yeah, I've got, I feel like I've got like a really lovely, friendly, supportive community, not just towards me, but towards each other. Like they have conversations, you know, within the posts and I love that. So it's a really nice, happy community. And in addition to all of this, you have got another job as well, haven't you? Yes, I work for the NHS. So I do, I do clinical coding. So thankfully not patient facing, but my mum is patient facing. So it's been like a weird year, um, but it's a nice escape to have the horses. We've been lucky enough that throughout the whole of lockdown, we've been able to go and see the horses, which has been like our escape. Yeah, no, I can I can only yeah. imagine. I think you're all absolute heroes. I don't <laughs> Thank you. know it. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't really know where to start. So can you, let's start at the beginning. Why did you start on social media? Why did you pick the platforms you have? And how has that grown for you? So I started my horsey account just because my friends, a lot of my friends were, weren't horsey. They're all in the music industry and they were just like, Beth, just stop posting photos of your horses every five minutes. I was like, right, I'll make another account. Um, And it just started from there, really. Like I used to have, uh, when I used to ride my other horses, it used to be more of like a fail account because I'd be pinged around like a rag doll. Um, But yeah, it's just, I think Instagram for me has just become like, I don't know, like a lot of people see it as a job, but I quite enjoy it. Like, don't get me wrong, there's times that I find it quite stressful, overwhelming, but it's just like a happy place for me. Like the people on there are lovely. Um, And yeah, it's just grown over the years. And I mean, and it's grown and, and some. How many followers have you got now? Oh, um, I actually, off the top of my head, I think it was over 100,000, which is crazy. Um, that that blows my mind slightly. But I don't think I've really acknowledged the amount of followers that I've got, because otherwise I think I'd get too stressed out. So like just, the pressure. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, I think of it more as, uh, like you know, posting to my friends. So now I don't use my other, like my personal Instagram account. I don't use that at all really now because I just couldn't deal with having two. Um, So, yeah. And would you say your account growth has been quite steady or have there been kind of real surges? And what do you connect those to? I find, so that's a really good question because it's, it's a weird one. Before I, when I was around like sort of when I first hit 10,000, you do get a steady a steady growth um and then it slows down and then it spurts and then it slows down and then it spurts um it's a weird one and I I can't work it out but yeah I think it's slow and steady and then you have you do get spurts every now and again I guess maybe it's like the new generation of Instagram users possibly who knows but yeah and how have you found that your your kind of relationship with Instagram has changed as you've got bigger and bigger did you you know as you say you don't really acknowledge the number because that makes you feel quite overwhelmed but have you Mm. how have you sort of taken that on because obviously there's a lot more work when you've got hundred thousand people following you and lots of lovely Mm -hmm. comments and engagement and you get incredible engagement so how have you managed all of that oh do you know I would say I used to have a like more of a hold on it but now I like the other day I got blocked on a really important day when I was um, announcing my Charles Owen partnership, I was blocked by Instagram from putting any captions up. And I was like, please, all I was doing was like replying to comments. I wasn't, you know, spamming or anything like that. So I think at the moment it's a lot harder for people to engage just because if you do too much of anything, you get blocked. Um, But for me, I've always been quite mindful of what I speak about on my Instagram, you know, like I'll talk about my feelings or my, you know, like what I'm experiencing, but I'll never try and put myself in anyone else's shoes, like, you know, and make a, like assumptions and stuff like that because I think that's for someone else to talk about like their story um 
So yeah, I, I think the only thing that's really changed on my Instagram is the actual content quality. So I used to, it's embarrassing if you go quite far back, it was like phone photos or screenshots, um, of videos, like grainy. And then when I started Instagram, the whole, uh, the thing that people were doing at the time, like the fashion of it was to have these crazy borders on your photo. So like you'd have like a photo with a heart, sh oh, horrible, embarrassing. Thankfully I don't do that anymore, but yeah. You still keep those on your account? Yeah, I've got I've got like my first ever post on there. I think I was asking people for opinions on what white breeches I should buy because I had a hole in mine or something. So yeah, I have got all my old, old ones. I love that though, because I, you get to see the whole journey. Mm. And I think that's quite inspiring for your followers as well. Because I, I would imagine quite a few of your followers, well, you've got quite an, a range of age range of followers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's lovely for the younger people, particularly, to see that everyone starts somewhere. Yeah, definitely. And it doesn't just happen like overnight. And I think that's that's something that's really important, I think, for people to understand is it doesn't happen instantly overnight. Um, that it does take a bit of work. It's not just a case of, you know, if I shout you out, you'll gain a load of followers, um, and then that'll be that, you know. Like then this is a conversation I was having with my friend, I really want to, you know, get a few more followers in. And I said, well, make sure you've got a good relationship with the followers that you have, because it's a one and good reaching out to new people. But if the people that you already have following you aren't, you know, part of your your family, then you're not going to get any different engagement. Yeah, absolutely. So engagement, engagement is more important than the, the amount of followers to me. Oh, completely. I think that that's how you... So I know you also do a lot of work for other brands as well, but it's really important to get that engagement rather than just kind of post and no one really likes it, no one comments. It's lovely to have that big number next to your name, definitely. But as you say, if that doesn't really mean anything, if people yeah. don't really care, it's not the same, is it? No, no. And it's good to be like sort of you know, someone that you, you build relationships up with people. So then they do like appreciate or respect your opinion on things, you know, so you're a bit more reputable to these people. You're not just selling them stuff all the time. You're building a relationship where you get to know them and they get to know you and that you're actually human. You're not just like a marketing tool, you know? Mm, definitely. When did you start working with brands? Because obviously there you've mentioned about, you've just announced a really cool partnership with Charles Owen and I know you've got other things going with other brands. So can you talk to us about how that started and how working with brands has kind of grown and developed? Um, so I think maybe, oh, my first maybe gifted sort of thing was around 10 or 12,000 followers-ish. Um, and I started working with Eclat and I'm still really good friends with Jordan. Um, she was the one that actually inspired this whole rose gold craze for me. Um, and so, yeah, that happened. And then I think the thing is, is you have to love what you're taking photos of and promoting, you know? Um, and that's like a good way into it. Um, it's, it's such a tricky one to talk about because I think when you're when you're a slightly smaller account you have to reach out to brands um but you have to be professional in doing so so you know messaging them on instagram and saying hi can you send me a free t-shirt and i'll take some photos not the way to do it you know email you know you have to think of it as it's business and you wouldn't like message a job opportunity you know over instagram or facebook so to have like a really good email set up um where you can talk to them professionally and, and you have to say what you can offer them. So like the first few things that you're gonna do, you're not gonna get paid um, and you might not get a lot, you know, you might get like a, a an outfit or something, which a lot of people are more than happy with and that's fine. Um, but you just have to have your expectations slightly sort of lower to start off with. And then, you know, as you grow and your account grows, then you can start saying, actually, this is a business for me now. And I want, you know, I want to be paid just to make it worth me doing because it is it is time consuming it does get time consuming no I couldn't agree more and I think that what I was really keen to to chat to you about as well is kind of the two sides of it because as you say what you said there is brilliant because I know so many of the brands that I work with get messages get dms that are literally sponsor me question mark and then the brand sees yeah. that and then they get like question marks as the next comment. And I, I don't know on what planet someone thinks that at that point, the brand's going to go, what, what do you want? Mm. It's all yours. Mm. But I think that that kind of interaction 
and at, you know, a lot of times makes people makes brands a bit wary of working with some influencers but then obviously from an influencer point of view if you're being offered like a t-shirt and you're expected to do 10 stories five instagram posts to your hundred thousand mm. people that's mm. really insulting as well so mm. it's it's a really tricky one isn't it it is and i think so I think part of the problem is, is because obviously you can message whoever you want. If they've got an Instagram account, you can message them, which makes it a lot more accessible for people that might not understand, you know, like the how big it is to message a brand and say, sponsor me, you know, like, so that's just like one thing. If you're going to, if you want to work with anyone, email them, draft it out properly, professionally, don't message people on um, Instagram, but I guess it is an easier way to do it because, you know, before, what would you do? Sometimes you couldn't like before Instagram, where would you find their emails? You might have to go digging on websites and stuff, but most of the time they have their email linked anyway. Um, but I think that it is, it is like a hard one because a lot of people are happy to do work for free. And then that makes it harder for the people that do want, like to make a living or earn a living or even just to pay the expenses because if you're not in my situation where you have someone that can take your photos you have to pay a photographer and that's expensive um and then you know there's a lot of time and money that goes into these posts that i think sometimes people don't realize and sometimes companies don't realize um but yeah i i've seen like a lot of younger people and it's it's just like that having having something to say like oh you know oh I'm working with so and so they're happy to do that they're happy to have one t-shirt that they and I've seen it and it is so heartwarming that these kids are, are so happy they'll get one t-shirt but then they'll promote that t-shirt for literally their on every post on their Instagram and they don't realize how much they're doing for this company that they're doing so much free marketing for this company and sometimes I think that that's why there's a a, a bit more of a a blurred line with play, uh, paying people and then not paying people because why would they pay someone when they can get someone to do it for free and do more of it? Do you know what I mean? Even though the engagement might not be there, they're still going to plug, plug, plug. Um, and I think that's something that's really like a, a thing in the equestrian community because like, you know, if you look at normal influencers, they can get paid like thousands just to promote one product, you know, breed and then that's you know that's that's one job for them done whereas I think you know some of my friends have been like you know I've offered to do and they've offered like professional photos they've offered a lot of things which would cost them money and I think they've just said just give me 50 quid and they won't you know people don't want to pay that because they would then find people that would do it for free but then they don't understand the amount of time expense and and the benefits of using some you know thought it through I can yeah. see it from both sides and I think that's the point, really, isn't it? If you've got somebody who is is perhaps happy to accept something for free and do loads and loads of content around that, that can be great, absolutely. But then if you've got somebody who's got perhaps got a bigger following, again, you're getting a, a big engaged following, you're getting in front of a lot more people. Mm -hmm. And if they really think about the quality of their content as mm -hmm. well, it might make it more usable on different platforms. There's an, there's an awful lot that goes into it. And also having someone who has, if you've got a big account and you've got a big engaged following, the chances are that post is going to reach more people because you understand the platform better. Yeah, yeah. It's a, a lot of aspects. It's a weird one, isn't it? It is a weird one. Um, yeah, it, I, I just think, I think now anyone with an Instagram account can potentially make money from their Instagram account if that's what they want to do. So don't I, don't I don't want people to think oh you know she's rolling in it I'm, I've literally done like well, I think one one or two paid posts in my whole of Instagram um for me I I you know I don't want to have like a management I don't want to have someone that does my emails I want to work with people that I feel are really lovely people and I I'm passionate about their products like I want to keep it real um but I also know people that want to do it professionally that are really struggling to to make a business out of it because there's there's so many people that would do it for free and why would they choose to pay someone when they can get it for free mm. and what do you think about what you just said then about you really like to work with brands that you love and stay loyal to them and I think that's such a big thing because I know and I'm following accounts that jump from these are the best boots to these are the best boots to these are the best boots in like a week I just think mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. I don't kind of trust what you're saying um mm -hmm. 
how do you view that? Because you say, you know, you'd like to pick out those partnerships you work with. So like this is, it's interesting you say that because like, I will never say this is the best thing ever, but I will say that I love this and I genuinely love it because this is the problem is I get sent stuff. So like my Holland Cooper coat that I've had since it first launched, I've worn that coat every single day and I love it. Like in my Aztec leggings, wear them every single day, love them. Um, and they are truly things that I have, before I worked with them, I would spend my money on anyway. I think you can love, I think you could, you don't, you don't have to be exclusive to one brand. And I think it was Tina Wallace done a post and I agreed with it. And she said like, you don't have to, you know, you're not, you don't ever have to exclusively only ever wear one brand because imagine doing that in the real world. Like, oh, I'm only ever going to wear top shop clothes or something like that. It's not possible because you can love this pair and this pair of jeans and, you know, they, you love them for different reasons. Um, and I think that that's fine to do. But I think you have to be careful with saying this is the best thing ever when, you know, like these are the best pair of boots I've ever had when you have another pair of boots and you were, and then your followers are like, hang on, you said that about the other pair. Like what, what one is it? You can say these are amazing boots for this, that and the other. And I love these for this, that and the other. But just to be careful not to, you know, unconsciously, like subconsciously uh, bash, you know, something that you were promoting once upon a time. I think the frequency of the switching is quite important too. If you're going from brand to brand to brand to brand to brand in like a really small time window, I think it can be quite confusing as a, a follower to kind of keep up. Would you agree with yeah. that? Yeah, I, I totally. Um, and I think this is the thing as well. I think there's a difference because I follow some accounts and they do that. They have like a different post a day wearing a different company that they've been gifted from. And I see that differently as to if you've had a long standing relationship with a company, um, but you like, you know, like I wear different, I wear different brands and I love them all, but I don't like, I don't, you know, then start saying, hang on a minute, how about another new brand and another new brand? And you know what I mean? Like, I think there is a difference like in people that are being gifted stuff and then people that are, you know, that they have long term relationships with companies because when you're gifted something and you just have to get a few quick photos, put it up, you're not going to really have had time to grow a relationship with the company, you know, like, you know, what they believe in and all that kind of stuff. So I think there is a difference. And what do you think that, how do you sort of think that translates to followers? Do you think that the engagement's better if people have got that relationship and they can kind of provide the background about the products and the background about the brands and why they really do like them? Or do you think the engagement is better when it's kind of look at me in this, look at me in this, look at me in this? I think it depends on the following and why they would like, you know, what they're interested in. Like if they want different ideas for maybe different brands that they might not have heard of, then the latter would be maybe a better one for them to follow. But then if they want like an investment piece where they know that they're going to be spending a lot of money and they want to know that it's worth it. And, you know, it's not just you saying this is amazing, go buy it when you've had it for five minutes. I think there's a difference. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. I think it is being that it is being open and honest with your audience, isn't it? If you mm -hmm. see something going, I love the color of this, isn't it? So me, that's very different to this is the best jumper I've had in my whole yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very different animal. Yeah. Um, and because you you work with quite a small handful of brands, don't you? Well, you know, I thought I did, and then put some people are like, "Hang on, you work with X, Y, X, Y, Z." Um, like I work with, I'd say closely, I work with about four or five. Yeah. Um, I already had a massive connection before I started like working with them. Um, but I, you know, as I said, like I wouldn't ever just limit myself to wearing one brand for the rest of my life because that's not how I think anyone would be able to, to do it. So I do like mixing it up. No, well, I absolutely, as you say, your followers will are used to that because that's very much how you've always mm -hmm. been. And I love the fact that you've bought into those brands before you will like share them and represent them. Yeah, yeah. Like I've had like so many different pieces. Like my, I mean, my wardrobe at the moment. Thankfully, where we're moving, I have a bit more space because at the moment I'm just. I was just like when I was packing stuff up, I was like, oh my goodness, like this collection. I think my horses have a bigger wardrobe than me, um, but that's absolutely fine. But well, yeah. they need it to look amazing, which they do. They're gorgeous. They do. Um, <laughs> so now you've obviously got an account of your size. Do you get a lot of approaches from brands yes um it's hard because like I 
my Instagram DMs, I get flooded because I don't know if you've had this as well, but my all of my story mentions are now in my inbox. Yeah. So anytime anyone messages me, it just gets pushed down. And I get a lot of requests for like shout outs and all of this stuff. And it just, everything gets pushed down. So the emails that I do see, I do respond to, but sometimes it takes me a while to get through my Instagram ones, but I do um, predominantly like on a gifting basis. And like, the thing is, is I'm happy to help people out. And I've, you know, if it's a smaller upcoming startup brand and I believe that they're nice, a nice company, because to me, it's about supporting nice people. I've worked with some people that I would never, ever recommend to anyone to work with again. I mean, they shattered my confidence and I was going to just give up completely. So if I feel that they're nice people, I would offer them a a substantial discount on the, like the photography side of it. Cause at the end of the day, most companies want the photos. And if I didn't have my own camera, I'd be paying someone to do the photos. So I just say, can you just like, you know, literally just pay my petrol and maybe like for lunch or something. And then you can have X amount of photos to use and I can upload one for you on my account um but yeah it's, it's a weird one it is a weird one because I think there's an expectancy like that if you're getting something that you should do it for free in return yeah you know like so and that's something I think that we need to like really address within this like community no definitely what have been obviously don't name names but what have been some of the emails that you've <laughs> read and you've been like whoa because I had um, a few episodes ago I had Flo Carter on and she had one email that was like dear sir madam and then we love your or something like that and it's just a big blank line and she was like I just had to laugh because I just thought what is happening here or Flo um I've been called Rose because my name on Instagram used to be Rose Gold Girl yes I was like come on guys like if you click on my profile it literally says Beth I've changed it now because I got so fed up with hi Rose and I'm like no it's my name's not Rose and it kind of puts me off a bit because it's like you haven't clicked it literally says it in black and white what my name is um so I've had that but to be honest with you other than that I will say my my emails haven't been too bad my my worst interactions have been with companies in person oh really yeah 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 oh gosh don't get me started. like it was awful I've, I've been called racial slurs um unattractive and fat and that was the one thing like when I say that that really I mean I'm, I'm a tough cookie I put out what I want to put out what I'm comfortable with putting out and I've said this to my friends as well like trolling it doesn't happen often to me thankfully please don't start just to prove a point no 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 but we don't, <laughs> that's not what we're asking for here <laughs> but I can deal with that because it's strangers who don't know me and they don't know like you, they don't know me um so their opinions of me don't matter but when like I've gone out of my way to work with a company and then they're so derogatory um towards me that that really got me um I remember that I think for about two weeks, I was literally like, I just don't want to leave like my room. It really upset me, really upset me. And you said that was and in person? Was like, yeah, yeah. It was like, um, I won't go into too much, but it was like a photo shoot for a company. And I was treated like an absolute, uh, yeah, horrible Oh my goodness. Horrible experience. But then thankfully, like after that, because I, I was in, because I was so far from home, I wasn't near my mum and my mum's like my blanket. Um, and I was like, I just have no one to talk to. I just don't know what to do. So I went on my Instagram stories. I was in tears. I was like, oh guys, I just don't know what to do. I just want to go home. Um, but without even naming any names, I had like about eight people within half an hour saying, I know exactly who you want about. And they've done the same to me. Really? Which... Mm is I mean it's awful still it's really awful but it's a great kind of use of Instagram for that community so you're not alone even if you're not at home as you say with your mum or anything Mm -hmm. like that yeah a hundred percent and I mean I I didn't realize how much of a range of ages I had like I've got mums of kids like that follow me I've got kids I've got older people I've got grandparents and I think that's really nice because it does feel like a little family like I've everyone that follows me is so lovely um and as I said I put out stuff that I feel comfortable with doing like I've put out stuff that my mum has said to me Beth I wouldn't do that like I wouldn't talk about so 
I don't, you know, you might want to put a trigger warning, but when I spoke about rape and sexual assault and PTSD, my mum was like, Beth, I don't know if I put that out there because, you know, it could potentially ruin opportunities for you in the future in like the real world, like the normal world. And I said, but mum, I've got this platform. It's not all, you know, sunshine and, and rainbows and stuff in life, stuff like this happens. And just because my account is a horsey account, it doesn't mean that that stuff doesn't happen to people in the horsey world. And when I put that out, I mean, I have never, ever, I mean, it broke my heart, but I have never, I never expected to have so many people from different walks of life, different ages come to me and say, thank you for speaking up about that because it's happened to me and I just didn't know what to do. It was, it was, that was like really hard because for me, hearing other people's experiences was worse than experiencing it myself. Like I would go through it a million times if it stopped someone else going through it. So that really broke me. Um, but yeah, it is, I, I love my little community, honestly. Like when I find Instagram hard, it's never because of the people that are following me. It's just because I put too much pressure on myself, but I've got such a supportive, lovely little community of people that are willing to help each other out as well, which I, I think is really special. I do think as well, you know, you you being so honest and open on there, the amount of people that you've got the like the power to help, I can completely understand where you're, you know, your mum's sort of worry and everything. Uh, absolutely. But it must have been lovely, as if not horribly painful as well. But to think that you've made a difference to those people, maybe they've realised they're not alone. They've taken a step to help them deal with it. Did, I mean, that must yeah, have been oh, a hundred percent like I've spoke uh, you know like I'm, I'm one of those people like I'm, I think this is the thing with me is that I don't realize what I'm doing sometimes so like I've got a massive account but like say someone's like oh Beth can I talk to you I'll be like here's my number so like now like I've, I think about a hundred people have got my number so I phone like I you know I'll quite happily talk to people on the phone and all that kind of stuff just because I don't see it as a business I just see it as like you know friends but it's just you know some of these friends um, and they like phone me at like in the morning and I'm like, shouldn't you be at school? Like you should be asleep. You've got school in the morning, go to sleep. That's a lot of pressure though, isn't it? That is a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Um, it is a lot of pressure. Sometimes it gets like to the point where I'll just be like, guys, everyone, I'm turning my phone off. I'm having a day um, where I just need to focus on like what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, everyone's really, really lovely. Now, thinking about the term influencer, and I know some people love or loathe that term. I mean, what do you think? Do you like the term influencer? I used to hate it. I used to hate it because I just used to think it's just people selling stuff nonstop, like, you know, buy this toothpaste, buy this whatever. And it was just like, that's what I knew of, you know, before doing this myself. And I was like, oh God, like, but I think influencing people doesn't just have to be about selling them products it can be about influencing them into you know maybe changing their mindset thinking differently about things um encouraging kindness and support so I don't mind it now I used to hate it and it used to someone like you know a few years ago someone was like you're an influencer like, like but now I'm a lot more comfortable with the term I think maybe because I'm more comfortable with my role within that yeah no that makes sense mm -hmm. so what do you love and loathe about this about being an influencer um I love meeting new people I love I love meeting new people like and you know pre-covid I had this idea and dream in my head that I just wanted a massive barbecue with as many of my followers that wanted to come just so everyone could meet and you know make new friends because I find a lot of people on Instagram sometimes maybe they don't have friends they might be at stables on their own they don't have people that they can talk to about that so that would be like you know the dream but I love the people that I get to meet, whether that's, you know, the companies or, you know, followers. I love meeting new people. Um, loathe. Oh, I don't like seeing people being horrible to one another. And that's something that I really struggle with. Um, and that's, I think, probably why I sort of choose I know Instagram as a platform so I know that you can just click like click delete or block or whatever and then it's done like whereas TikTok I've seen some of the stuff people get on TikTok and it's just like it seems like a whole different can of worms like there um so that's the one thing like you know just the constant people get on it on to me like you know the fake accounts like just to send people abuse is something that I struggle to come to terms with myself yeah 
No, I, I can understand that. It is there are some horrible things that I think we see most days at the kind of blow up or mm. people having arguments or being just horribly trolled by people that then don't even have the decency to be themselves on their account. They're a fake name and a fake mm-hmm. account. And yeah, but there is a lot of good on there. And I think that sometimes we can all go into the habit of thinking, oh, it's a horrible place. Everyone's mean. But there are some absolute gems out there, aren't there, that make it a lot of really nice place. Definitely. And I've noticed like as well, Reese, maybe just maybe from my like my page and that, but I've noticed a lot more support like support people are coming together to support each other more like when things do go wrong they rally around each other and I really like that yeah now so you're you're over 100,000 followers now which is incredible where do you want your Instagram to take you now what what would you like to happen in the future um I won't lie so in terms of growth and working with people I couldn't be happy with that like I'm happy like as I am um but maybe like I would like it to open open doors maybe into so I did a degree in psychology and my whole dream was to go into prisoner rehabilitation but I then really had to sit down and talk with myself because I don't think I'm that tough like I'm not that thick skinned to go and do that but just to maybe start bringing people together and changing mindsets of people you know because we all have and this is something that I struggle with as well like irrational fears like that we just make up in our heads and it's a problem like it could be like oh my god I don't like that jump or you know I don't want to go down that road just stuff like that and just being able to maybe speak about that or you know get more people involved in that sort of support and different ways of thinking like that's my goal like it's not for me it's not about it's not about money it's just about people you know enjoying and loving what they do but understanding that when things do go hot like go wrong and it's hard that they they're not alone in that because it can be quite isolating when you think like oh you know I'm the only one in the world that's not able to go and do this because I'm so like you know I've had it I've had it I've been like oh my god I can't even go and ride up in that corner it's so pathetic but then you know as soon as I put that out there everyone feels like that everyone's had something like that so for me it's more about just you know everyone loving and enjoying their sport which I think is what it should be about yeah no couldn't agree more with that um I say I have these brilliant ideas when you're speaking and then they just completely go because I'm looking at your list and you said something there that triggered a little thing in my head (laughs) um I know you wanted to speak about the money side of influencing but I think I've covered that yeah I was with the younger people yes no absolutely I was I've got the question now I was going to say have you got any tips that you could share with either people who want to grow their accounts and become influencers whether it's about the money side of things or about who to pick to work with and also from brands who are looking to approach influencers because you know what we were talking about and obviously on emails before today as well was that kind of that gap wasn't there the gap between what brands have to put up with and deal with and what influencers have to put up and deal with and there's a lot isn't there yeah um so for people that want to get into it like I would say so this is I'm just going to repeat myself for what I said I was on the phone to my friend for like an hour yesterday who was having a massive meltdown about oh you know I want to grow professionally but no one wants to pay me and she's got a good following um but I would say it's about building relationships with the people in your following already before you think I want to gain and I want to I want like a million followers it's all one and good having a million followers if a hundred of those don't even bother do you know what I mean like you need to have that community and that that engagement with the people and that reflects well on you because why would a company want to work with you if no one you know cares what you say like that, that's not to sound self-righteous because you know I care what everyone says sometimes I don't get to sit and read because I think I follow like 7,000 followers like 7,000 people I don't get to read everything that everyone puts but you do need to have that you know that people want to read and they respect what you're saying because they've got that relationship with you um, so I would say like work on the followers that you've got so interact with them because everyone wants to feel like what they're saying is important and everyone wants to feel 
like important don't they like you know you put a photo on there because you want you know you know whether it's a good or bad photo and you know it's a good or bad caption or whatever you still want people to come to you and be like engage with what you're saying and that works both ways because you can't put out photos and expect a hundred people to come and comment on your photos for nothing in return you have to then put the work in with them and I would say once you've got that sussed is to then really think what companies you love like what do you have that you love um, that you would recommend to your friend or that you wouldn't mind opening for Christmas because that's the sort of thing it is it shouldn't be about like you know just getting the most stuff for free um, and then once you've thought about that then I would say before you approach the companies is to make sure you have content with their stuff in it to show that you are passionate about what you know what they, they they're about um, and tag them in a few photos um, because that's what I started doing when I started my Instagram account I'd just like you know I'd do these really crappy like phone photos and I'd tag the companies in them and I'd be like this is what I love about x y and z um and all of that stuff and then I think once you've got that then you can think about starting to approach companies because at the end of the day they want to know what you can bring to them um and vice versa I guess uh, so you can go and say that like, I've got this amount of following but I get this amount of interactions usually like you know standard X amount of likes, X amount of comments and all of this stuff. Um, but just to be really, and it, it's such a, it's a, such a common answer. And you know, like whenever you're watching these sort of things and you want to know how to gain and grow and people are like, just be passionate about what you do. It's so true because it does show like when you're just copying, pasting um, like quotes off Google that have no reflection or meaning to you, it shows. Um, so I would say, yeah, do that. And then, you know, the worst that people can say is no. And if they say no, not this time, try again in a few months or a year when you've improved and you've worked on it. Because I mean, I wouldn't be afraid to ask for feedback. So if they say like, sorry, you're not what we're looking for. I don't think there's anything wrong in saying, could you advise me what I could improve on? And then working on that, if it's a company that you love that much that you know, that you'd want to work with in the future to then improve on that. Um, so I would say, yeah, I would say that that's a really good thing. And then with the companies approaching people, I would say, you know, actually make sure you're, you're, it's like a personal email, like not just like a, like what Flo got, like, hi, sir, madam, or, you know, for me, like not hi, Rose, just so you actually know the person that you're approaching. You don't have to know like everything about them, but I'd just say, you know, even just knowing their name and maybe what they do with their horses kind of thing, just so then they know that they've taken a bit of time to get to know you, to know why you'd be a good fit for them. Mm. And do you think from a brand point of view as well, and I know that a lot of very of, of social media savvy brands do this really well, but I've seen a lot of brands not do it so well, is when they're very prescriptive about what they're expecting that influencer to do in terms of, I'll send you a caption for you to copy and paste. Because I always think that the reason you want to work with that influencer is because of how they are with their audience. So if you're saying, mm -hmm. like, I want your audience, but I want you to put my words into your audience. I just, yeah. personally, that doesn't sit particularly well with me. I think it's you know, sending over key points or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I've never ever had that, but my it's interesting you say that because my friend actually has has had that. So they've literally scripted this whole literal paragraph for her to copy and paste. It's nothing like she would never say anything like it, but it's what they want, so she's doing it. But I've never had that personally. I've had like, could you just make sure you mention X, Y, and Z? And I, you know, then that's fine because then it's still my words. I'm just then mentioning keywords that they want mentioned like you know if it's a pink coat they might want to say it's pink and you just have to in your caption figure out you know but I don't I don't think it's right to sort of script what people say I think sending keywords and stuff is fine key points that you want mentioned because obviously at the end of the day you're marketing for them they might have designed something with like this this and that feature and then if you don't mention it then it's just like a whole lost sort of you know course on ter in terms of marketing that but so I think, yeah, keywords and that's fine. But I think, you know, when it's a, a complete script, I don't, I don't know, it loses its personal touch a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, no, I'd, I'd agree with you there. And in terms of payment, how can we kind of bridge the gap between influencers putting forward a good proposal and not just kind of, oh, I want 100 quid, oh, I'm, I just see what happens, and versus brands mm -hmm. saying, I'll give you a hoof pick and I want 20 stories and you to post it all over your grid with your 100,000 followers. 
what's the kind mm-hmm. of way to to help that I mean I, I would I would say it's probably like talking out and being honest and aware but what what what's your tips on that it's a tricky one because I didn't know this fully myself but I spoke to uh to Nick who's events for a lens and there's a di- such a big difference in you know your personal use photo so you could pay a photographer have a photo shoot personal use photos you can use them on your feed as soon as that brand want to use it that goes into commercial territory so they are going to either have to pay the photographer or you're going to have to pay the photographer for them to use your stuff so I think that really needs to be considered by brands but I've noticed myself, like, especially with my, because my friends come to me and they're like, oh, X, Y, and Z, they want to send me this, that, and the other for X amount of photos. I'm like, are they paying you? Because they're targeting, like, not targeting, that sounds awful. I'm not saying that they're targeting, but they they are approaching people that have got, like, the the better quality photos um, and then sort of, you know, saying, can you do this for free, knowing that, that it costs money to do photos. Do you know what I mean? Like, that they would normally have to then pay the photographer a commercially like a commercial photo shoot or whatever so I think that's a bit naughty I think if that's why they're coming to you because of your photo quality is to charge them as if you were a photographer because what you're doing is no different and I think that's the thing is like it's so time consuming like so if my mum's got one day on a weekend that she's free I'll go and do some photos with her that takes pretty much a whole day of doing the photos But then it's not just a case of just coming back and uploading them. I've got thousands of photos to go through, transfer, delete. And then the ones that I want to edit, they take hours. And then you've got to put them on, you know, transfer them to your phone. Think of a caption and all that stuff. Um, And it's not just a case of uploading and go. It's like it's such a long, tedious process. So I would think of it as if people are approaching you for the quality of your photos to charge them as you were a photographer. Yeah. um, and if you're like, you know, if you're having to pay a photographer, you need to like, you know, I would say have a conversation with your photographer because there's, you know, there is a line between commercial and personal use. Um, and yeah, I, it's sad because like I, even like there's a photographer that I know that does photos for my friend and she doesn't get paid for she gets paid by my friend for her photos but then she gets no recognition from the brands when they use her photos and they haven't paid for them either. And I think that's so, that hurts a little bit because it's such an art. Photography is such an art. Um, and there's just a line for me where, you know, you're happy for people to use your photos, but then they're starting to take advantage of your work as well. You mm. know? Um, so I think that that's kind of important. And um, it's hard. Like if, if you're not in that situation where you've not got a professional photographer or a camera or whatever to then think about what like what you would charge but I would do it in terms of your engagement and what you would have to offer you so like have a package like where you're like I'll do one unboxing um story a reel two posts and you can have five photos for your feed and that's going to be x amount um and I don't think that that's an unfair thing to do if I'm honest I think that's a good thing to do um and then I would go by I don't know like it is a it's such a hard one because I think money is personal to those who are asking you know and and charging for it because some people might be happy with a tenner and some people might want a thousand pounds but I think it's kind of personal to those who are setting that up it's what they're getting in return isn't it if they're getting a saddle Mm -hmm. then Mm -hmm. that's different if you're getting a couple of grooming products I Mm -hmm. mean there's a value connected to the product cost and the time and mm-hmm. the following and the reach and the engagement and all the time that goes into every aspect. There's lots of variables, isn't there? Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think as well, it depends on like whether that's like a company that you would already have like loved and know. Do you know what I mean? Like if it's someone that you love, you, you I would do it for nothing. If it was a company that I loved and that it was a childhood dream of mine to work with them, I wouldn't ask for anything um but then if it's like a company that you're like "Mm, that's not really my kind of thing but it still work for me then you know think about charging maybe and then you've also got to think as well like if you've got a company like that's got like 800 followers and then you've got a million and they want to send you like uh like uh, like a pair of socks and they want you to do this that and the other and then they're being demanding then you've got to really think to yourself actually it's not more worth it for me you know like for free like for a free pair of socks 
yeah so it is a tricky one because there's not a lot of there's not a lot of out there about how much to charge you know so you're like you're just in a field where you're like like just lost and and you don't know what to charge because you don't know what anyone else is charging but I think it is you know it's just worth sitting and maybe having a look at how much people would have to pay for like a commercial photo shoot and then go from there and like work things out for yourself and like what you know what would make you comfortable and what you'd be happy with charging because the other side of what you do in addition to obviously being an NHS person and an influencer you all are also a photographer aren't you mm, yeah I love it I do I and I'm you know I I do photos for people I don't know if I've ever done yeah so I work with uh Liv and Fred she's one of my sponsored providers so I do like a few photo shoots for her I haven't seen her in a year because of Covid but with her I just say to her like I don't mind if, if the companies want to use my photos because she, she's doing me a favor by promoting my photography stuff she can have them for nothing but ordinarily like you know if it's like a com- other companies they want x amount of photos for this then I'll just say look you can buy the photos individually to then use as you wish on you know your pages um but yeah I, I I used to do music photography um I just I have this thing about I just love photography like it's just a nice little outlet you know like you know how some people like going for a run I can't run for it like to save my life so I'll just do some photos instead just a nice unwinding little thing for me and they are gorgeous and will you be with hopefully the covid restrictions easing are you looking to kind of do more photography in 2021 and beyond a mm-hmm, hundred percent yeah I actually just booked something I can't say what it is but I've booked something that I'm excited for so yeah I, it, it's coming into summer as well so we've got the pretty lights nice weather everyone can get their nice frocks out um yeah I, I I think hopefully well let's just keep everything crossed that we just have a nice a nice summer where we can go back to new normal um mm. hopefully now, have you found that having such a big account as you has helped with your photography side or do you treat them as completely separate? I won't lie I'm really bad with my photography page I think the last time I posted was Christmas okay. just because I get so like, my head's just in my normal account all the time and um, I think where I've not done anything for a while I just haven't really you know done anything but I mean if I'm ever doing a like discounts or anything because I try to keep it as affordable for people as I can so like you know I do offer like discounts and stuff because I understand that not everyone's got like a few hundred quid for a few photos of their horses so you know I try to make it as accessible to people as I can Um, and if I've got anything like that on I do share it sometimes when I remember to log into my photography account I do (laughs) try to but yeah maybe I should get my mum to manage the photography account because it's just like oh another thing (laughs) oh absolutely well You've been amazing, as I knew you would be. Just, I just knew you would. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before I ask you all the places where people can find you online? No, I don't think so. I, I, I mean, the last thing I would say is just remember to be kind to one another. We're all on, like, you know, different different paths and, you know, we're at different stages. And if you see someone struggling to just, you know, be kind, you don't have to put them down. We've all been there once, we've all learned once and we're all still learning, never stop learning um yeah just to just to be nice to each other that's literally all I ever say to anyone is just be kind like even if you're having a bad day you know you can make someone's day with a compliment you know how good it feels to get a compliment it feels better to give them so yeah just be nice to to everyone you meet <laughs> you're a superstar thank you so much for coming on it's been thank great you for having me. thank you for having me well no no problem at all can you tell us all the places where people can find you Yep, so Instagram is just best and equestrian. Um, I think my YouTube is the same. Um, I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else. I don't really use Facebook um, or TikTok. TikTok scares me. So just Instagram and and, um, and YouTube at the moment. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me.